out at Hefley Lake heading down on the ice I've been fishing the last three days but never did much video it was kind of windy weather was messy so let's go out there I've been catching trout though let's go make a video today so I have something to post for you guys I know you like the ice fishing so got the ice drill got the jaw jacker Tiny one. Okay, let's go to a better spot and see if we can't get some bigger fish. They are up at Hefley Lake and uh, fish are a little bit spread out today, I think. So, what we're going to be using, I know a lot of times you guys see me just use it directly a spoon. And bait and the fish hit that some days they're not in the mood to take that large of a presentation so on those days I often just use a tungsten jig so without anything else but if you're having trouble locating fish or they're more spread out than usual you sometimes need the attracting flash of a spoon in the combination with a smaller presentation like tungsten jig now the reason I use a tungsten jig when I'm using a flashing uh, spoon above is because it has a dense uh, it has a density that's uh, greater than lead and it'll fall faster than the spoon so when you're using a lead jig you might get it tangled up in the spoon when you're jigging it down there but if you use a tungsten jig you're less likely to have that problem so that's why you use that and you'll find sometimes uh, the less aggressive they are the further you'll need to put the jig from the spoon if they're more aggressive, you can put it closer to the spoon. If you're actually seeing the trout come in and actually take a look at your spoon, then put the bait up quite close to the spoon, you know, three to six inches. Uh, if they're more slow, you know, 12 to 16 inches, but somewhere in that range, and you'll, you'll see if you're using your Markham where they're coming around. And if they come into your spoon, just raise it up quick, and they'll see your small jig and usually take it. So that's how I use it in combination with the flasher. So let's drop it down there and uh, see if there's any fish in this area. Now, today I have a little uh, Shimano Sahara 750 FB reel rigged with about eight pound uh, micro ice line. And this is a rod by Circle Tackle. It's called the Dex 27. It's got a bright fluorescent uh, ultralight tip. You can see it's pretty sensitive but it does have a stiff backbone so it can take a bigger fish. You can see it bends over good like that, but any little bite and you get a fine dip, uh, little tap on the tip there. Oh, we got some weeds here. That's always a good sign for trout. They like cruising over weeds. Once you drop to the bottom and you see you have weeds, with your Markham, you can, you can stay off the bottom then so you don't pick up weeds. Just turn your gain high enough so you can see your spoon and jig yesterday was a big snowstorm and i knew yesterday was going to be a good day for fishing because i looked at the forecast and saw that the pressure and was going to be consistently dropping during the day and for some reason i find that a falling barometer with a snowstorm coming in is good for trout fishing i may not work every time but it's a pretty good rule from what i've experienced and now today is clear and the pressure was supposed to be rising up so on days like this i usually expect the fishing to be tougher so the fish aren't always hugged in in the shallower structure you often have to find them a little bit deeper so that's why i'm in 13 feet of water i'm going to move around look in the shallows look in the deep because i still look everywhere because you they don't always follow the rules but let's see if we can't find some fish today i'm suspecting now that i'm not seeing any fish right away that's going to be a little tough today. 
Did you, did you see that bite? Let's see. Get it back down there too. Just tapped it lightly. This is why I punch lots of holes because quite often you drop in a hole and right away there's fish there. They bite, they leave. If you catch them, you do. If you don't, you don't. But then there's nothing after that first one. You have to wait quite a while. So I just hop to the next hole and quite often there's a trout in that area and they'll come in right away to inspect your lure as it's falling down. So I drilled a whole bunch of holes. We're just going to keep hopping along and see if we can't find a better spot because that one came in right away and bit it, but I missed him and uh, need to get warmed up here today. Start catching some fish because they seem a little bit finicky. They're coming by a whole bunch of times before he actually bit it. You know, he come by five or six times, so I wasn't expecting the bite when he bit it. That's how it goes. A lot of guys actually ask me how long I spend fishing in a hole when I'm hole hopping. And it kind of depends what you're fishing for, but uh, most of the time I don't spend much, much time at all. If I have lots of holes drilled, I'll maybe only spend two to five minutes in that hole flashing an attractive pattern. And if I haven't seen a single mark, then I'm not going to stand in that hole for much longer than that. Two to five minutes and uh, ready to move on. Sometimes after a minute, if I'm not feeling it and it's too shallow in that hole or something else is wrong, just doesn't look right, there's some junk messing up my uh, signal, I'll just move on to the next hole. Okay, let's go. There you go. I got him. He's a little bigger one. He's a little bigger one. He's a little bigger. Not that huge. But hey, we got one. We're just up actually in seven feet of water. We're on a big, huge shoal area. The biggest shoal in the lake. And uh, he came through about four times before he bit it. A little rainbow trout, probably about 12 inches. And that flashing spoon and the little tungsten jig, let's get them back. Guys often ask what I'm using for bait. I use all different sorts of stuff, you know, night crawlers, mealworms, shrimp. I don't think it really matters all that much. Some guys think it, it does, but I don't seem to think it matters. If you're in the right spot, and you can use the right presentation, you'll probably catch fish on whatever bait you're using. So just make it look good and you'll catch fish regardless of the bait. Well, let's see if there's any others in this hole here. When I'm using this uh, flashing spoon and the small jig, you'll see if you're not looking down the hole, makes it difficult to use this presentation because then you're just hit and missing it. But uh, when I'm watching the mark come down the hole, I jig that spoon and let it flutter down. And I do that pretty consistently with only short pauses until I actually see, oh, there's fish. Until I see a fish. Now I see a fish. I'll slow it down, but we're in shallow water. So look at him quiet here. Here he comes again. You see, and once I see a fish come, I stop those big jerks. I just do little, little twitches. And then if I don't see them, I might flick it once more to get them to come back. Oh, there's a fish. I got him. That time I just pulled it a little away from him. That's a nice one. That's a beautiful bull. Oh my, went through there. Look at that one. Real pretty colorations on them. Pretty colorations on that one. Nice bow. Took that little hook. He came in pretty aggressive, actually came at the spoon. So I just pulled it up, uh, the jig in front of his face, and then I just kept pulling it away from him and he smashed it. Okay, nice little fish. There we go, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good fish, I think. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good fish. Hopefully my battery doesn't die. Yeah, I got a good one here. There we 
I go. Nice fish. He sure came in and had to work him a little bit, but uh, got him. That's a that's a beauty. That's about a 17 incher, 16 and a half, 17. Finasse rainbow trout. Nice fish. Let's keep fishing. I'm fishing uh, near the narrows on the lake. Right over there is the narrows. And then over here, on this side of the lake, there's a big shallow shoal. It's all pretty shallow, five, six feet deep. So those few holes over there that I was fishing up shallow, five, six, seven, caught a few fish, saw some coming through. And then it drops down in these holes right here, 10 to 15 feet right across. So I was fishing over there in the deeper holes, 14, 15 feet, but I didn't see anything. So I hopped back over here till about 10 feet where it starts going up back onto the shelf. And that's where I cut that last one. So I'm gonna try here again and see if any other ones come through. Cause that was a nicer fish, mostly small fish in this lake, but there are some decent ones up to 20 inches maybe. So let's see if we can catch some. That was a really good fight on that uh, dex rod. That light action, a lot of fun for the trout. Here are the eagles. I hope they don't come steal my fish over there. Oh, nice. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. Nice one. I got him. I got him. Little guy. Little tiny one. Let's get him back and get back down there. I'm just using half a mealworm. That's all you need. Break off half, save the other half. Because usually that's the difference between the baits. I find mealworms, you only get one or two fish on one. But if you break it in half, you can potentially get like two to four fish. Then you thread it on the hook so it lasts a little bit better. Fish can't pull it off. With night crawlers, you they last a little bit longer. You can get uh, several fish on one piece of night crawler sometimes it'll get all smashed up but it still works shrimp uh, stays on the hook relatively well if you have a decent piece it's pretty meaty especially if you brine them first you put them in coarse salt let them sit for a few days in the fridge just to get firmed up that works really well and they'll stay on your hook but I don't like how kind of gobby it is so it's it's not very nice and neat. Uh, shrimp is kind of a gob, and I think sometimes it obstructs the hookup. So that's that's why I don't really like uh, shrimp. But they all work really well. Shrimp works really well. A lot of guys swear by shrimp. Well, we're in business. There's a few fish around here, so let's see if some more come through with some bigger size to them. Oh, look at that. It's starting to snow. Sometimes that means the pressure is dropping when some weather moves in, so we'll see if the bite turns on a bit here. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good fish. Oh yeah, we got a good one here. We got a good fish here. Oh yeah, it's feeling drag. It's feeling drag. Look at this rod. <laughs> oh, look at that, it's peeling drag again. Oh, that's a nice fish. Well, oh, that's a beauty. Look at him peeling. <laughs> I saw him, he's a good fish. I want to land him here. Oh man, that's a nice one. Oh, look at him peeling. That is really fun. Oh, come on up here. I knew he was larger because he kept chasing my spoon. So I had to get the... Oh, he's a big one. For this lake, he's good fish. Come on up here. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look. 
at that beautiful fish. Oh, that's a beauty. That's got to be 20 inches. On that little tungsten, that's atomic wax worm. Beautiful fish. Look at that. Gorgeous rainbow trout. Oh, yeah. Gotta love it. So much fun fighting that fish on the light rod. Beautiful. Let's see how that aggressive... He probably would have hit a spoon the way he was coming up to my spoon. But I just pulled the spoon away from him and then he, he 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 actually bumped my jig two times before that. But he was so aggressive he just kept coming in. Beautiful fish, right? Okay, good. Beautiful fish. Can't beat it. That snow came in. Like I told you, sometimes that snow triggers a pressure drop. And they just go on the chew. This guy was super aggressive. Probably the most aggressive fish I've seen yet today. Let's see if we can't catch any more fish. So with that last fish, I was pretty sure it was a big fish because it was a big mark and he kept chasing after my spoon. He would uh, chase it up, almost up to, we're in 10 feet of water. He chased it all the way up to three feet under the ice. And uh, I kept trying to get my little jig in front of his face. So sometimes, that is the issue with using a flashing spoon. They're more interested in your flashing spoon. I guess some guys use a bigger flashing spoon to kind of distract the fish and not make them want to actually eat it. I like using a smaller flashing spoon since I think it, it does the job, it attracts them, it triggers an aggression bite and uh, they'll often still hit your jig below the flashing spoon. I got him. Oh, that's another big one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, it just come. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Oh, my, that's a big one. Look at him. Kill and drag. Oh, my. Okay, is he still on there? Did I lose him? Oh, he's still on there. He's still on there. He's still on there, guys. Oh, my. Got a big one. Oh, that's a big fish. That's a big one for this little lake. Oh my, that's a nice fish. Oh man, that's a beauty. Okie Dinah. I'm on the spot today. This guy came in. He was uh, chasing my spoon. I again took it up to the upper notch. Oh boy. Oh, look at that gorgeous fish. Look at that beauty. What a gorgeous fish. I didn't expect to catch fish like this out on this lake, but what, what a spectacular fish. What a beauty. Again, with that flasher spoon on that Dex, Dex 27 rod, that fish just came in and smoked it. Little flasher spoon. He came in hard off the bottom. I knew it was a big fish again, huge mark, and he was chasing the spoon. I cranked that spoon up and I kept pulling it away from him all the way to like two, three feet on the air, under the ice. And then he finally grabbed it. What a beautiful fish. What a beauty, look how pretty the colorations on that fish are. What a gorgeous fish. Look at that beauty. All on that little tungsten jig. I think it's called the atomic wax worm. Beautiful fish. Look at that gorgeous fish. Well, I have to say that that was really surprising. I wasn't expecting to get two big rainbows like that. It's really funny. Like I just had another big fish come through and it's almost like a switch gets flicked. Every time there's a snow squall coming through, the fish get super aggressive. And then right now it's clear and it's stopped. They come in and check it out, but they don't even bite. The last two during the snow squalls, I had them chase it all the way up to two, three feet under the ice and I'm in 10 feet of water. And these guys, they can't get up two feet off the, the bottom now and they're not even striking at it. Crazy how the behavior changes from minute to minute throughout the day. There's a fish. There we go. We got another one. Oh, that's a decent one. That's a decent one. He's wrapped. 
He's rocked. That's a decent one. Another good one. Man, where are all these good trout coming from? That's a good one. That'll be my limit fish. Limit fish. Beautiful fish right there. On that uh, tungsten jig. Man, they sure fight good. A lot of pulling. On that Dex rod, Dex 27, I think there's a Dex 24. And I think he said he might make different lengths next year, maybe some longer ones. A lot of fun on that light rod. You see you get a good hook set no problem with that ultralight tip and can fight them well. <laughs> Just set your drag good with these trout as always and uh, fish on. That was a lot of fun. I gotta maybe catch and release some. Maybe I'll go get the kids. Go back to the cabin now and grab the kids. Thanks for joining me today out on the ice. Hope you enjoyed this little fishing adventure out on Heffley Lake. If you're a uh, fisherman uh, who's like would like to get into ice fishing but doesn't have any gear and you just want to see if you like the experience I know a guy up here from Elevated Fishing Adventures he does uh, guided fishing on Halfley Lake and other lakes in the area if you want to get into the sport that'd be a great way to give it a shot before you go out and buy all the gear yourself give him a call find out if he can uh, hook you up with some fish out here and I'm sure you'll have a great time Actually, I was supposed to be out fishing with him today, but I still wanted to give him a shout out on this video. And I'll put a link in the description below. So if you would like to get out ice fishing here at Sun Peaks, if you're out visiting and want to get away, a quick getaway from the resort, it's only 15 minutes away, nice and close, and uh, the fish are very willing to bite. And there's some decent sized fish, as you saw today. Nice, beautiful 20 inch rainbow trout. Hey, thanks for watching. As always, if this is your first time to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you find out when I post videos again. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, hit a comment, and uh, enjoy. See you later. Have a good time out on the ice this year.